Okay, so let's talk about the stock market, right? Everybody wants to know what's going on. Um, everybody hears about it. It affects your 401k, your um, investment accounts. So let's talk about what's happening. So you hear that it's the longest bull run um, and you hear, oh, there's got to be a crash at some point. Um, and you hear just a lot of stuff right now. And so let's talk about why it's a bull run and why people are um, concerned why you hear analysts saying, hey, there's got to be, you know, a burst somewhere. So bull run. OK, first, let's clarify that what a bull run is in the stock market means that the markets are going in upward movement. Um, and the reason for that is when a bull attacks with its horns, it does this right. Um, and when a bear attacks, it takes its claws and pulls it down. So this is where the whole bull and bear market comes in. All right, so that's out of the way. So we hear that this is the longest bull run in history. Um, now, every administration that has uh, been in office during this bull run is take, trying to take credit for it. So Obama's administration tried to take care of it while they were in office. Trump's definitely trying to take credit for it while he's in office. Um, and Congress would love to also take credit for it if they could. Okay, let me make this clear. None of those, none of those people have, have anything to do with why the markets are doing so well. You can thank the Federal Reserve for why the markets are doing as well as they are. So um, the markets have been on a steady incline since the 08 financial crisis. It's been a decade. And um, there is a lot of concern as to as to this big of big of a bull run. Um, and the reason for that is normally what we see in the markets is about an eight year business cycle, meaning business cycle, meaning, you know, an upward movement and then a downward movement. So an upward movement and then a correction. We haven't really seen that. Um, we haven't really, we, I mean, no recession no recession uh, since the Great Recession. And so we haven't seen the markets move like this. And there is a reason why we've never seen the markets move like this before. And also why there isn't uh, a common consensus among analysts about why the mar market's are moving this way and why it's not moving as we would normally anticipate, why their estimates are off. Um, and it's all because the Federal Reserve put in $4.5 trillion into the U.S. economy from 2010 to 2013 in a very short amount of time. So if you remember, there was something called quantitative easing or QE, right? And there was QE 1, 2, and 3. And they just kept buying bonds and bonds, meaning they were pumping in money into the U.S. economy. And so they blew up their balance sheet up to $4.5 trillion. That is an insane amount of money. And so that is why you are seeing the markets move the way they move. Now, people ask, well, Kim, that was like back in 2010 to 2013. Like, how is that affecting it all the way into 2018? You have to remember that is a very large sum of money. And the U.S. economy is an enormous beast. And so... It takes time for that money to really circulate all the way through all the different facets of the U.S. economy. And that is why it's taken time. And that, but we are still, I mean, we've been seeing the fruits of those labors this whole time. And this is why, like, 2017 was a phenomenal year. Um, it, that money is in full circulation at this point. Um, and so that is why the markets are doing so well. Now, the big question everyone always asks is, okay, so when is going to be, when is there going to be a crash? This is where the analysts are really having a hard time, where their analysis are going awry, because it is not moving like we would anticipate for it to move, or it, that it's moved in the way that it has historically. And the reason it's not moving is because this has never been done before. The Federal Reserve has never pumped in money to this level into the U.S. economy. And so this is all uncharted territory. Um, and so this is where you don't have common consensus from the different um, 
news outlets, you know, because one analyst is saying one thing and different analysts saying a different thing, and they can't come to an agreement. And it's because it's never been done before. So there's really no direction um, that they have on how they should really be doing their analysis. And so this is where we're getting a lot of confusion. Now, there was an economist that um, wrote a book, and I can't remember his name now, but the book is called The Great Deformation. Um, and he argues that the Federal Reserve is the asset bubble. And I actually tend to agree with his, uh, his perspective. Um, but the difference is here is that it, it's not a bubble like we have seen in the past. So if you see where the markets have gone up, like the dot-com bubble, um, during the tech bubble. So, you know, the technology sector caused the market to bubble up and then you saw it correct um, in 2000, well, end of 99, 2000. Um, that's when the dot-com bubble burst. And then, um, and then of course, 9-11 happened. That's an external factor that's different. And then you had uh, the housing bubble come up and then the housing bubble burst. Well, we haven't seen a burst, and um, and we probably won't, at least not from internally. It would have to be an external factor that causes our markets to correct. And that is because that $4.5 trillion is artificially supporting the stock market and the U.S. economy. And that is not in the hands of the public. It is in the hands of 12, 12 board members of the Federal Reserve. So... That means that that money that's, you know, caused this bubble is not, it's not going to burst. That money is not going to come out quickly. That money is not going to be, um, I mean, that $4.5 trillion, if they pull it out, it's going to take at least a decade plus to undo what they pumped in in three years. Um, because it would have to come out very slowly, not disturb the U.S. economy, which is what the Federal Reserve, um, that's their only objective, is to keep the U.S. economy stable. So this is how this is how we know that it's not going to burst because they're not going to just yank that money back out. That would be detrimental. They're going to take time. And they're slowly doing that in the um, right now as they're increasing rates, which is a good thing. Okay, a lot of people are like, oh, no, that's a bad thing. No, it's a good thing. That means that the U.S. economy is strong enough to take the hit. So this is not a bad, this is not bad news. Uh, but for them, to, they're going to have to slowly pull that money out of the U.S. economy. And so, and it's going to take time to do that. So this is where um, people are concerned because historically we should have seen a correction. And that's why you see a lot of people uh, or, you know, a lot of the outlets saying, oh, you know, it's got to be coming soon because our analysts are seeing this and da, da, da. But it's really not following any of the fundamental analysis. It's not following any of the technical analysis. And it, there's a reason for it. Again, this has never been done before. It's all uncharted territory. So until the U.S. economy and the stock market get so big that the $4.5 trillion um, in comparison you know, proportionately is no longer a big support um, in either one of those um, entities, um, then we're not going to see a burst unless we see an external factor coming in to affect that. Now, that could be something like a full-blown, full-out trade war with China. That could be a thing. Um, whether that's actually going to happen, that's a whole nother issue. But um, and personally, to me, I don't think that's going to happen. But um, but something like that, where it would be, it would have to be an external factor that you know um, comes into and affects the U.S. economy and the stock market in order for it to really have a downturn. So um, so this is why you're seeing it as high as it is. And no, it is not due to Congress or any White House administration. You can thank Ben Bernanke for this one um, and Janet Yellen and now Powell. So um, they're the ones that uh, were in charge. They were the chairs of the Federal Reserve um, and Powell is currently the chair of the Federal Reserve. So anyways, hopefully that gave you some additional insight and you understand better why we're seeing the movements that we're seeing. 
Um, if you guys have any questions, let me know. If you don't want to ask publicly, um, you know, on Facebook, you can just go ahead and message me and that's fine. Um, but let me know what you guys think. Hopefully this helped. Um, I try not to get into too technical information and too in-depth detail. But if you guys want more of that, let me know and I'll be more than happy to oblige.